Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A package thief in a U-Haul once again caught on camera, and whoever it is seems to have a knack for stealing special gifts intended for loved ones. States are getting creative, offering lotteries to incentivize vaccination against COVID-19. So why isn't it happening here? In about an hour and a half, an adult in Ohio will win a million dollars and someone age 12 to 17 will win a college scholarship just for getting vaccinated against COVID-19. It's not without controversy in Ohio. We told you about it at five. Ohio's lottery is called Vaximillion and it'll take place over several weeks. Let's move to the state of Maryland. They're calling it Vax Cash. Someone has already won 40 grand there. The states that are trying to get this are getting some strong participation. What's Michigan doing? Sean Lay has been looking at the reasons Michigan can't hold a similar lottery, at least uh, not right now, right, Sean? Devin, you're correct. Those states you just mentioned, especially Ohio, seem to be doing this with ease using federal COVID tax dollars to fund these lotteries. Not yet in Michigan, maybe not at all. We're, we're told from Lansing it's complicated. One county, however, knew it had to get the private sector involved in this to offer up a car. It was like a Buick Enclave, I believe. Bay County Health Director Joel Strauss tells us the key to enticing more people to get vaccinated with a chance to win a car for two years and cash prizes was to have the business community donate those prizes. No tax dollars were used. Uh, they were able to garner resources to do a raffle and that included prizes of a two year lease on an automobile. It included a $500 gift certificate and a, and a host of other prizes that were donated. With vaccination rates slowing down, the state just had to look south to Ohio, seeing a jump in vaccination rates by offering the chance to win a million dollars if a person there gets a shot. The governor says plenty here want the same incentive, but... Michigan law precludes us from doing that, but we are investigating if there are additional ways that we can encourage people to get vaccinated. McComb and St. Clair County State Rep Pam Hornberger says a vaccine lottery here well, it's definitely complicated, complicated because the Michigan Lottery Commission would likely have to be involved. How do you designate COVID dollars to the Lottery Commission? I'm not sure how that would work. If it wasn't COVID dollars and it went through the Michigan Lottery Commission, I believe it would have to come from the general fund, in which case it would be taxpayer dollars. So then you're opening up a complete another can of worms. Another can of worms. Look, we asked the Michigan Lottery Commission, are you going to get involved in this and partner with the state? The commission said no comment. You've got to ask the governor. So we asked the governor's office, did not get a response. But tonight, guys, it'll be fun to see someone win a million dollars just over the state line. Back to you. <laughs> see how it continues to work. All right, Sean. We're following breaking news from California after nine people, including the gunmen, are killed in a shooting. It happened this morning at a San Jose rail yard. The shooter worked there. He took his own life after that shooting. Police have not yet shared a possible motive. Officers are also investigating a fire at a house the shooter owned. They're searching for possible explosives there as well as at the scene of the shooting. There will be much more on the investigation ahead at 630 on NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt immediately following this broadcast. Eight more women are claiming Eastern Michigan University covered up their sexual assaults. This is alleged in a new Title IX lawsuit. The lawsuit names six alleged attackers and says more than 30 women have come forward about sex assaults at the university. Today's filing comes two months after 11 women filed a similar lawsuit alleging school officials and fraternity members covered up and failed to properly address sexual assaults by multiple male students. The school has previously called allegations of a cover up false. Started this past December and twice now we've aired doorbell camera footage of a thief running out of a U-Haul and stealing packages off of people's front porches. One time she was clad in hot pink. In the latest video, she's operating along a busy road with seemingly no fear of being seen by the many people driving past. Victor Williams has been following this story for us. Uh, this really has neighbors talking, uh, Victor, in Detroit. Yes, that's a whole lot of people talking and you know it's something because just the mere sight of this right here is enough to have someone break the law multiple times in order to steal package after package. I saw that someone had pulled in my driveway 
ran up, took the package. The infamous Detroit porch pirate is back, this time victimizing a resident that lives on West Outer Drive in Rutherford. I really thought that she was caught once before. And for her to be back at it, that means that she hasn't learned her lesson. The woman who ordered the package did not want to go on camera, but she says what was inside was a gift for one of her daughters, a brand new hoverboard. I have twins. I already ordered one of them a hoverboard, and then I ordered the second one, and it was taken. She was at a relative's house when the Amazon driver made the delivery and pulled off. Just a little over an hour later, the scantily clad porch pirate pulls up in a U-Haul. I think that that's stolen. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if she grabs, you know, a U-Haul or steals it or rents it or what she does, but I believe that that's stolen because you can't have a U-Haul for that long. That would be too expensive. She believes if only she was home, there would be a totally different outcome. Had I been here, it probably wouldn't have been a good thing had she got made it to that truck. She just wants the porch pirate to stop before it's too late. As you can imagine, people are getting tired of having their packages taken over and over again. Something's bad going to end up happening to her. The wrong person is going to catch her, and that's not going to be good for her. And uh, the good news, at least for this woman, is that Amazon is going to be replacing that package. But we did send that video over to DPD. They're going to be taking a look. But one thing that they're stressing is that when people find themselves in this situation, they have to file a police report. That's the only way they're going to be able to move forward with recommending charges to the prosecutor in case this person is indeed arrested. Victor Williams. Local Such four. an important ingredient to mention. All right, Victor. Okay. Well, the cool down has officially started, <laughs> aided by some much needed rain, though. Quick drop in temperatures, wasn't it, Ben? Yeah, this is a real deal cold front, guys. And uh, even though it's not quite done with the rain, we still got a couple showers holding on to Monroe County there, but they're almost through. And so as those exit, yes, the temperatures will be the story tonight. We're at 76 right now, but it is cooler than it was yesterday. Look at what's going on to the north. Sioux, St. Marie and Marquette both at 48 degrees. It is 32 degrees colder there than it was yesterday at this time. And we're going to see a nice drop in temperatures tonight. Here are the next four days. You can see highs getting as cool as the 50s on Friday, and they start coming back as we head towards the holiday weekend. There are some changes we'll talk about as far as rainfall goes, but you can watch the last of the rain come out of here tonight on the local forecasters app. It's everything you need for the next 10 days in your app store by searching WDIV. Guys. Hey, Ben, thank you. In today's COVID headlines, President Biden is calling for U.S. intelligence agencies to step up their investigation into where coronavirus came from. The president wants intelligence officials to, quote, redouble their efforts and give him a report in 90 days. He also called on China to cooperate with international investigations. Meanwhile, the faster... The Faster Horses Music Festival has announced it will return to Michigan International Speedway in July after being canceled, of course, last year. Today, the state reports 799 new cases and 12 additional deaths. Research from the University of Michigan is shedding new light on the value and accuracy of antibody tests. Our Dr. Frank McGeorge is here with a closer look at what researchers found and why that's important, Doc. Yeah, Kim. So at the beginning of the pandemic, the FDA allowed many manufacturers to sell rapid antibody tests on an emergency basis without the usual quality testing that would normally be required. That led to doubts over the accuracy of those tests. Now, this new study is helping clear up any lingering concerns. Early in the pandemic, there was a lot of confusion as to how well antibody tests worked and whether they meant anything. Dr. Chase Schuler is an allergist immunologist at the University of Michigan. His research team set out to determine if three inexpensive finger prick antibody tests were effective at measuring COVID antibodies. What we did with the study was look at several different point of care antibody tests and really compared their accuracy against in lab testing and against the standard COVID PCR testing, the so called you know, COVID nose test that people are so used to now. There were some false positives, but two of the rapid antibody tests were accurate between 93 and 97 percent of the time. Both outperformed the third brand, which lost its emergency authorization during the trial. What we really found was that the heavily regulated tests um, by the FDA performed pretty well. And the tests that they'd initially approved and then later rejected 
uh, didn't didn't do as well and weren't as accurate. Schuler says this sort of follow up is critical. I think we've seen that in a lot of areas of the pandemic and in general with science more broadly. Um, when you have a test or an intervention that doesn't quite pan out the way we thought it would, I think people understandably question their confidence in that testing. And so it's important as scientists and as researchers to come back to things that have been confusing or have been misinterpreted um, and, and really be clear about what they actually tell you and what they don't. Now, the researchers will continue to follow the people in the study to try and help determine how long COVID antibodies last and how long they continue to offer protection against becoming reinfected. Yeah. Back to you. Good information. Okay, Doc, thank you. Ford is doubling down on its efforts to go electric. Ford says it plans to spend more than $30 billion by 2025 with the goal of having 40% of its vehicles electric by 2030. Automaker says it's going to add about $8 billion to its EV development spending this year to 2025. That would bring the total to nearly $20 billion as Ford begins to develop and build its own batteries. Ford's already launched, of course, the all-electric Mustang Mach-E crossover. I'll vouch for that. And recently unveiled the electric version of the F-150 Lightning pickup. Wayne County honors fallen first responders. Today, 14 names were added to the first responders memorial in Hines Park, which is located at the corner of Hines Drive and Haggerty Road in Plymouth Township. At the event, the late Benny Napoleon was honored by his successor. We stop and pause at times like this to honor our brothers and sisters behind the badge who have gone on before us in the last year. At the sheriff's office, we spent the last year fighting this insidious pandemic. Unfortunately, it took our beloved leader, my mentor, and my friend, Benny Napoleon. Napoleon, of course, died on December 17th of last year at Henry Ford Hospital, three weeks after going on a ventilator with COVID-19. Lawrence Tech University set to become the new home of the Spex Howard School of Media Arts. That's right. The new relationship is set to begin June 1st. Existing Spex Howard students will complete their current coursework, but in fall of 2021, new degree specific classes for Lawrence Tech Spex students will begin. All students will take their courses on LTU's full service 107 acre campus in Southfield. Since 2004, both schools have had an agreement that allowed SPEC students to transfer some coursework to Lawrence Tech's certificate and degree programs in media communications. Broadcasting work out okay so yes, far? So far so good. Yeah. I, I still keep the truck driving license, but <laughs> just in case. Uh, I head here. Uh, where is the price of gas and other forms of energy going? A new expert predictions are not all that bad. Also, married couples do all sorts of things to help each other get through tough times. One Detroit woman giving her husband a life-saving gift that not everyone can give, and that is next.